Right, so, and the human colon is colonized by microbes that can utilize both inorganic and organic sources of sulfur. The inorganic pathway are the so-called sulfate-reducing bacteria, and they use, uh, most use hydrogen uh, gas, which is a byproduct of fermentation as a source of electrons to reduce uh, inorganic sulfate to sulfide, hydrogen sulfide, um, a genotoxic and pro-inflammatory gas that's made by those organisms that use inorganic. There are also microbes, other microbes that can utilize organic sources of sulfur such as the amino acids taurine and cysteine. So one in particular that we've, we're very interested in and have done a lot of work with is Bolophilowodsworthia. That's a bacterium that respires taurine and through a three enzymatic step can also generate hydrogen sulfide as, a, as an endpoint in that uh, metabolic pathway. And then other organisms can use cysteine, so it's a fermentative process uh, to also generate hydrogen sulfide. Well, we've uh, demonstrated that hydrogen sulfide at concentrations lower than have been measured in the human uh, colon. Exogenous hydrogen sulfide is a potent genotoxin, so it, in, it induces DNA damage directly and is also pro-inflammatory, and uh, pro-inflammatory environment is uh, pre predisposition to colorectal cancer. So that's the, the work we're pursuing. Certainly, but more importantly and, and more innocuous would be diet. So the work we've done also demonstrates that a, an animal-based diet uh, promotes the growth of these organisms, particularly those that utilize organic sources of sulfur, which would be increased in an animal-based diet that's high in both protein and fat. Um, so the application of the work we're doing is uh, perhaps the relative abundance of this organism that uses taurine as an example. Uh, could be a biomarker that um, one could then advise the individual based on the relative abundance of this organism that uses taurine, which would be increased in a, in a diet high in animal products, to very carefully watch the diet. Right. Well, yeah, I think everything in moderation. So it's, you know, processed meat and so the the amount of taracolic acid, it's one of the primary bile acids, is increased with a, a diet high in animal fat. And taracolic, uh, the taurine can be cleaved from taracolic acid, which uh, can then be used as a substrate for this uh, microbe that we've demonstrated is uh, persistently colonizing the mucosa, tightly adherent to the mucosa, where it would have contact with the clonocytes. Could be, and, and there have been studies, so we've also done a study with uh, native Zulu Africans, for example, and their native diet for the traditional Zulu is a, a maize-based porridge, uh, putu, and they grind the, the corn and, uh, in the morning and make a, a porridge that's flavored with root crops, and they're, um, that's what they eat throughout the day, and that's very high in fiber, resistant starch, uh, precisely. So it's a highly fermentable diet, and the instance of colorectal cancer, for example, is essentially nil in the traditional Zulu population. So we did a study that uh, compared, we uh, did a diet swap with Zulu Africans and African Americans, which can, you know, in the, in the U.S. consume a, a high meat-based diet. And we had 20 um, Zulu Africans and 20 African Americans, and we switched the diet. So we fed the African Americans the putu, for two weeks, and we fed the Zulu Africans a, a extreme Western diet for two weeks, and we had biopsies before and after the diet swap, and we saw increases in the abundance of these bacteria that make uh, hydrogen sulfide, and the Zulu Africans that were fed the animal-based diet for two weeks, and we also car saw corresponding changes in host biomarkers of colorectal cancer risk. 